actually do with both of these. So they're both examples of pill presses that were seized in some cases that CNA was involved in a few years ago. And we have them so that we can show people that uh, the drug cartels or other profiteers or drug dealers that want to get involved uh, in the business, they can actually press their own pills out. So these were seized by uh, some people that were making uh, Xanax or fake Xanax, counterfeit Xanax. And it's pretty simple. They obtained this uh, more than likely online. Uh, they obtained that one. There's the dyes for the different pills here. And you just, in this case, we have cornstarch, but they have the ingredients for whatever pill. Let's say the fentanyl pills, the little blue ones, they'd have the, the stamps for the blue pills. Mm -hmm. They put it so that it's in the machine. They put all their chemicals in. Uh, all the powder, everything, the binding agents. This doesn't have a binding agent in it, but it's usually there's like three or four different ingredients at a minimum when they make these pills. So they put it in there, and then uh, these people jerry-rigged a, a motor onto it. That's a hand one, so you're going to get more out of this one with the big crank on it and the actual electric motor. Uh, so this one's going to be able to go through a lot more. And look at the hopper on it on this mm -hmm. one versus the one on the back side there is a lot smaller. How, how many pills do you think they can crank out of this thing? As much uh, as they have for the, uh, the materials for it. So until they run out of material. Uh, I don't know how many it makes an hour. I mean, it just depends on how well it runs. And But they just crank them out and then they get anywhere, in this case of fentanyl, wholesale for like $9, $10 a pill up to... 20, maybe even $30 a pill when they crank them out. So the profit adds up really fast as it goes around. Mm -hmm. And if it works, hopefully we'll see that uh, people can get an idea how quickly they can put them out. Uh, the other thing with uh, these pills, like the ones that come up from Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, it wouldn't surprise me if the, uh, the drug organizations down there manufacturing them have even bigger, more sophisticated, mm -hmm. possibly even pharmaceutical grade type machines to press them out. See, that's the problem when you okay, have so clandestine do, things. They, how about we do some by hand? <laughs> no, this no, one's no, not put all together, though. No, it's not? Same way. Yeah. No. Self-destructed like that. That's why they have this on here. Because they wanted hand. to keep producing, so they just did that so they can yeah, hand crank them. And they just bypass the, the motor. This is a street Okay, so you can't... That's well, a real pill press, but it... They rigged it up. However they got it, the, the original uh, electrical outlet, they... It was cut, so they went and got this motor and threw a drive build on it. Pressed them down in Mexico. They, they try to pit those agents in there. That's like the glue for the pill. It's part of the ingredients. So part of the reason why you get drug overdoses on these pills, because they're not made in, to pharmaceutical standards. They're not made in an FDA-approved lab. But what happens is the people that uh, the drug manufacturers the dealers that are making this. I mean, there's no exact science to it. I mean, you see they're just pretty homemade. Mm -hmm. They just dump the materials in. So it doesn't get mixed properly and spread out throughout all of the mm -hmm. compounds. So when it presses, sometimes it'll do what's called hot spotting. And that means that, you know, in this hopper, because it's not mixed, that one pill might have two milligrams of fatal dose. One might only have one milligram of fentanyl. One might have 1.4, mm -hmm. one might have three. It just it just depends on what uh, you know what's in there, how much is actually there, and as it goes through it, because they don't use the exact science that you yeah. know a real drug manufacturer would use. <laughs> Depending on what it is, if it was the fake Xanax that they make, they could sell those for two to five dollars a pill. Uh, the fentanyl, like I mentioned earlier, a lot more. Uh, whatever recipe they have and, and precursor chemicals they can get their hands on. So, And just I want to note this is a case that CNA worked uh, jointly with uh, DEA. DEA is a real uh, strong, important partner in the Counter Narcotics Alliance. We get a lot of support with them. Uh, we work very well with them. And we wouldn't be able to show demonstrations like this without the assistance of uh, our DEA agents here in Tucson and around the state and country. So here's a question. So the people who, who were convicted who had this, what, were they a pretty, part of a pretty big ring or were they just kind of a small time deal? I think they were more of a small time type dealers. Uh, as I recall, it was some, 
there was a case down around the, I think the U of A area perhaps. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm not positive on the details of it, but I think this person was getting chemicals to make Xanax and cranking them out. There's the dye for the Xanax in there that were also seized in the investigation. Mm -hmm. So they were making those and there's actually a pretty good appetite for uh, the PAM drugs like lorazepam and uh, diazepam, any of those types of benzodiazepine drugs on campus. Uh, the college students for some reason like to use them. So able to get a hold of a uh, copy of one mm -hmm. and that's how they used it. It's like a, it's like a Superman symbol. For Superman symbol. And when you see symbols like that, that's common in some of like the, the party drugs like MDMA, ecstasy as it's known. Thank you.